What's up YouTube, Cunningham Cichlids back with another video. In this video we're going to talk about the importance of grow out tanks. So for you beginning breeders or you breeders that have been around for a while, um, we're going to go through the importance of why you need grow out tanks. And you also need a plan if you're going to start breeding, how many grow out tanks you can afford to have. And that should play into how many species you're going to breed. And I'll explain why in the video, so let's get going. All right, so when we talk about grow out tanks, there's obviously tanks come in various sizes. So depends if you want to start with fry and you want to put them in a 10 gallon tank. And depending on what you're breeding, you know, 10 gallon, 20 gallon, maybe 40 gallon. Um, some fish obviously can even go into two and a half and five gallons. It just depends what you breed. When I first started breeding African cichlids, I had a rack of 18 10 gallon tanks and that was my main area to put all my fry first before I upgraded them to 20 highs or 20 longs. Right now my current setup is, I have 15 gallon tanks on top, I have 20 gallon highs on the middle rows, middle and bottom. I also have 20 longs over here, six of them. And I have the same setup, 15 or uh, five 15 gallon tanks, five 20 highs and five 20 highs. Now when we walk around, here we have a 110 gallon grow out tank that's a new addition as well as another 110 gallon tank down here that's a grow out tank that's a new addition to my fish room lately because I need more grow out space for everything I'm breeding. And back here you'll see I have six 40 long tanks right here that are made to be made to be grow out tanks. There's another three of them and I also have three 30 longs here. And if we come around, the last two of my grow up tanks are these two 75s that are here. Now with grow up tanks, you need to plan your species. The rule of thumb to me is every species needs at least four grow up tanks. Because you have various, sta various stages of fry. And I'll show you. So if we walk around to my room, here we have my tumblers. And this is again, this is another breeder tool that you need. If you're going to breed, you need to have enough tumblers. Right now, I believe I have 15 tumblers running in my fish room. And I have multiple females in various tanks still holding. But if we take, for example, uh, Mylochromus ericatania here. We'll take these guys are in a tumbler here. So these are a new batch um, that are hatching. And we go over here. I have Mylochromus ericatania in this. 20 gallon here and I also have a new batch I stripped last night in this tumbler here. So right now that fish is taking up one species is taking up two tanks and three tumblers to try and produce the fry for that group. If we look at the Aristochromus christii I have fry in a tumbler here as well as another female that's holding in my group. I have bunch of Aristochromus christii here in the 110 gallon grow out and I have Aristochromus christii here in the 20 gallon high. So that fish right now is occupying a 20 gallon high and it's occupying a 110 gallon tank. However the new fry that I'm getting out of the tumblers when they come when they develop and lose their egg sacs as well as when I strip the female I will not be able to put those together. Therefore that fish will at least occupy a tumbler at the time and three aquariums because I will have two different broods of various sizes from that fish. So it's very important when you plan to breed how many species, how many grow out tanks you can afford to have room for. And to me, it's at least one species to four grow out tanks. And then I'm also using some of these 40 longs to grow some future breeding, breeding groups. These are brought to me this uh, species, Johnstone I Solo, as well as I need to grow out another group of uh, Nethernops turning Golden Harbors. I ended up losing my group uh, in December for some reason, don't know why. Um, tank crashed and I lost them. And I also have grown out some uh, Stigmatic Chromos Tole down here from my fry. So, it's important, again, when you're breeding, that you have multiple tanks to put the fry in, because you're gonna have various stages of fry. BC-10s, I have a female holding down there. Case in point, again, I have, let me 
ignore my mess. I had a fry in my 40 long. And I had a fry in food walk over here. I just pulled a fry out of a tumbler last night for the VC10s. And I have a fry in this uh, this 20 high. But unfortunately, the fry that came out of the tumbler are too small really to go with these guys in the 20 high. So I have them in a net for now because I really don't have a tank to put them in at the moment uh, where I can throw these guys out at. So again, I can't stress it enough. I made a lot of mistakes when I first started breeding. Um, I did not account for the number of species versus grow out tanks. Obviously when we get into African cichlids, we get the buzz, we get the grave, we want one of everything and we want to breed every species. And that's just not the case of point. Especially if you're going to get into breeding Malawi peacocks or a lot of Kara peacocks. You really need to be careful when you're breeding peacocks because the fry cannot be put together in the same tanks. Because if you're breeding a lot of Kara Mylandi sulfur head as I am, as well as a lot of Kara Canadese blue orchid, a lot of Kara Banshee, the, the mega, as well as a lot of Kara Brevinitis. I cannot put any of those fry together in the same tanks because I will not be able to tell them apart down the road. So that species, me breeding four peacocks, using my rule of thumb, I at least need to have 16 tanks available for that for those species when they start breeding. And some of them are breeding them. My landy uh, salt brands are breeding. I just stripped the blue orchids tonight to put fry in a tumbler. I already have blue orchids growing out in the 20 long over 20 long over there, so. And the same thing with apochromus, when you're breeding various haps, you need to watch how the fish look. And you will not be able to put some of them together because you will not be able to tell them apart. Here you're looking at my nasty Gromus prostoma gold male. Gold male, he's all, he's fired up, he's got three ladies holding. So you gotta look at how this fish is. So the females have silver with the line. So this resembles Protomina species, which is my Entertaining over here that I just pulled fry from tonight again too. So if I'm if I have fry from my Protomelus Plurantania, I will not put them in with a grow out tank with my Nasty Chromos Prostoma Gold. Because down the road I might mix them up and not be able to tell them apart. And when I have a customer that wants to buy fry from me, I won't be able to guarantee that species that that's what they're buying. So that again adds additional tanks if you're gonna breed species that when they're fry size that they look alike or hard to tell apart because you will need to have various tanks set aside. For example, stick metachromus tolly again another example. These guys down here. I would not put these in an aquarium to grow them out, although I could tell them apart probably, but I would not put them in with the copernichromus green face meloto that I have because Again, you get the dots on the side, that fish looks similar. So a lot of the grow out tanks I find, and when I do breeding, my grow out tanks are species only tanks. It's one species per grow out tank. Then I know what's in that tank and I won't mix it up. So I know this is a lot of rambling. Just, it's my opinion, just not beginning breeders. I jumped in head first. I had 140 aquariums in my fish room. For those of you that followed me earlier on, um, I've been looking at my older fish room tours, it's on my YouTube channel. I tried to breed something of everything between the various lakes and it does not work that way. You need to have patience and specialize or work with species. And maybe, depending on your fish room, you can only breed 10 species because that's a lot of tanks you have for breeders and for grow-out tanks. And that's okay, everybody can only do what they have room to do or you know what they want to do when it comes to this hobby and that's what's so great about this hobby is the diversity between fish rooms between breeders and between just general hobbyists that want an all male tank there's nothing wrong with any of it it's all great uh, part of this hobby and we can learn from each other too so in the comments let me know um, give me some feedback let me know if you agree with my one uh, one species per four grow out tank rule that I try to live by or you know, try to work with. And right now I'm breaking it because I do have more species than I do grow out tanks. And so I'm gonna have trouble because I have eight tumblers there going that are eventually gonna need to go somewhere. 
I have two tumblers in the grow out tanks over there, plus two breeder boxes. And I have three newly tumblers back here that I have going. So I will have trouble down the road and have to work on moving some species around, use some breeder nets, some additional breeder boxes possibly to house the species until they're big enough that they can go in additional grow out tanks. So again, let me know your feedback in the comments. Let me know if you agree with my, uh, my synopsis that one species per four grow out tanks. And thanks for stopping by and watching. I appreciate it. Please give me a like, share, subscribe. Um, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I do new videos and stay tuned.